Hi, Jeff Love from Alternative Heating and Supplies. I'm going to discuss on how and what options you have of hooking up your boiler to your pool to heat it. Now we're going to talk about the wiring of your aquastat. When you buy the kit from me, it already comes with a pre-wiring diagram. It is actually a very simple thing to do, but in the diagram that we provide you with our kits, um, it will explain it and show you a little picture of how to do it. But I'll give you a quick lowdown. Basically, as I told you before in the earlier of the video, you want to draw your power from the pool filter or the pool uh, pump. If you have a 220, these run off a of 110. Basically, the way 220 works is there's two legs of 110 which make 220. You're just going to pull off one of the legs. Get a a professional electrician to help you out with this. If you're not familiar with electricity, this is not where you want to play. You get hit with 220, it might be the last thing you do. Check that out. Get an electrician. So you're going to pull the one leg of 110 volts to your aquastat. That's going to power the aquastat. You're going to set the settings in which you like on the pool temperatures and the differential of where, so at, let's say you set it to 189 like me, and you want a one degree differential, it'll ask you that in your settings, and that if you set to 1, at 88 degrees, it'll turn on the heater again. Or you can set a differential at 2, so at 87 degrees, it'll turn on that thing to bring it back up to 89. You're going to make that setting in, in the aquastat. Whatever you choose, when that aquastat calls for heat, it's going to open up this three-way valve. When it's not calling for heat, the water is automatically going to be bypassed circulating this way. When it calls for heat, it's going to open this valve, which is going to, instead of sending the water down, it's going to send it through the heat exchanger and back around. That's it. That's how simple the system is. What's going to monitor the temperature of the water to tell it to turn off is the probe, which is mounted in the cold water line from the pool. We mount it on the cool side because we don't want to monitor it here because the water coming out of the heat exchanger is increased. So we monitor it here. So after it's all circulated inside this pool, and neutralizes, it'll come through here and it'll tell us to turn it off. Just that simple. One of the other common questions and something that took me uh, months to learn is when to run your heater day or night. Through trial and error, once again, finding out that if I ran the heater day and night, I thought I would get the greatest gain of heat. I was most definitely wrong. The most efficient way that I found heating the pool, and I've also done this with numerous other customers of mine, which I explained to them that this worked for me and they also uh, agree with me that this was the best way to run their heaters also, is when you're running the pool, you only run it during daylight hours and you save some energy, don't turn off the filters, turn off everything at night. But the concept is, is that when you're running during the daylight and you're not swimming in it, put a solar cover on it, which is a blanket, basically. Uh, which is going to hold the heat in at night. Just like when you're sleeping at night, you put a blanket over your shoulders because your body's working less hard, which you want to hold that heat in. And then during the day, you keep the solar cover on and you circulate the water. So you're getting some solar benefit as well as heating benefit. Obviously, when you want to swim in the pool, pull off the solar cover, go. You're ready to go swimming. When you close up at night, you want to put that solar cover back on and turn off that filter. The reason why you lose so much heat at night is the heater is going to be circulating water through the, through the uh, heat exchanger and let's say we're running at night and you're going through the pool. When you're making turbulence or water, turbulence on top of the water, that is a transfer of heat. That is basically swapping the heat faster with the air outside which is colder. So you will actually neutralize and when I was doing it, I was gaining zero degrees at night and running my stove all night. So I made zero gain. When I found out that I turn off my heating system and covered my pool with a solar heat uh, blanket, I also lost no temperature in the pool. So saved a lot of wood, saved a lot of electricity, and saved a lot of effort. So turn this off at night, put your solar cover on, and during daylight hours, keep your solar cover on if you're not swimming and turn on your filter and you'll get that heat exchange. You'll gain anywhere, depending on the heat exchanger, which you choose, you can gain anywhere from 10 to 12 degrees a day. So in the springtime, you turn on your pool, at you open your pool and it's 55, 60 degrees. You could be 72, 75 degrees in the first day. 
Second, third day, you could be back up into the 80s, 90s, you're ready to go swimming within a couple days. Depending on how big your stove is and the heat exchanger, which you buy and make sure it's installed properly. But that's the trick, you can get it. And then during, once you got the pool up to temperature, the maintaining of it uses much less wood and the maintaining of the temperature of the pool is much easier for you loading the stove. The first couple days, you will be cranking some wood. So, uh, and also oil or whatever heating system you're doing because you gotta heat up that many gallons of water and you're also heating up the ground around it. So, don't be surprised that you're gonna go through some oil or wood or natural gas or propane, just like a conventional heating system or pool heater. You, I have a friend that burned, uh, I think about $1,500 worth of propane to get his pool from spring or early spring uh, temperatures up to a temperature which his kids could swim. This is gonna be a little more efficient, but it's still gonna be a big impact on the, the fuel consumption. And finally, we're at 12. Putting the pool away, you're breaking down the filter, you're covering the pool, you've done your chlorination, you know, whatever you do to get your pool prepped and ready. You're gonna be breaking down your filter and everything like that in your pool pump. And most of us, uh, I'm in, from in New England here, um, everything freezes. These also freeze and will break. We recommend, like your pool filters, you usually have to break them down, drain them, and take them inside. In this case, with again, the Cooper Nickel, these always have unions on them. So when you're taking in your pool filter, um, you can break off the unions, take this inside, just to prevent it from freezing. Uh, if there's water in here, even though this is a cast, uh, a cast iron uh, uh, exchanger on the outside, it will, if there's water in here, it will freeze. If you don't want to take it in, just make sure both lines, the boiler side and the pool side, have no water in them or very little, because if it's anywhere close to full, Mother Nature with her freezing strength of water will break anything. So make sure you, and I just recommend, take them in. The warranties on these are incredibly good. There are 10 years on the Cooper Nickel and there are several years on the stainless steel, but there's nobody that covers freezing. Okay, so don't freeze them. Blow them out, dry them out, bring them inside. Uh, they'll last much longer. Okay, that's about it. That's all I really have for you. We are always here to answer any questions that I have not answered in the videos. And feel free to call us. Um, it's super simple. Save yourself a ton of money. Have a happy family and happy wife. Life is good. Enjoy the beers. Enjoy your summer. Have a great day. We also carry a full line of pool and spa kits to hook to these heat exchangers, whichever one you decide. The pool and spa kits that we have have all the fittings with the instructions of how to wire the aquastat, these things, and all the fittings that it does to tie into the PEX. We have the three-way valves, as you can see here, the thermal wells for the aquastats, transformers, and anything else you're gonna need to hook it up. However, the only parts that we do not include in these kits are the CPVC fittings. And the reason why is every pool will use a different size PVC, depending on the size of the pool. For example, a small above ground pool will use a one inch, uh, a much larger 44,000 gallon 20 by 40 swimming pool in ground will use anywhere from a two and a half to maybe a two inch pipe and so on, okay? There's too many variables for us to carry the CPVC, so we've decided that we're gonna leave that up to you and everybody wants to plumb it differently. Again, if you're using a stainless steel heat exchanger, we recommend you put unions here so you can take on and off in the winter to put them you know, warm so they do not freeze. That's the only aspect of it. And that's really it. Check out our kits, check out our catalog and our website. It's alternativeheatingandsupplies.com. Uh, and our catalog, which is also can be found at the very top of our website in the center, um, and you can download it. Or just give us a call. We'll put one in the mail for you. Have a great day.